Welcome back to the Bayside Fabrication YouTube channel, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Well, today we're going to visit my buddy Othniel and we are going to tune the 911. So uh, I know I haven't been posting much, but I've just been logging hours in this car. I've been working my butt off doing just boring work stuff. But uh, yeah, today I, we had the opportunity to uh, get over here and to his new shop. Uh, he just bought a dyno and he's getting all set up and everything. So we're gonna pay him a visit and see what this thing can do here. Um, we're not gonna go too crazy. I'm not gonna try to push the limits of this motor or anything like that, but we're gonna see how things plan out or uh, play out rather. But I think we're looking at, you know, probably like high four, 500 horsepower range I think will be perfect on the street uh, really anything more than that you can't really use on the street anyway so it's kind of like what's the point you know I'd rather have a nice strong healthy motor than you know riding the edge of anything I mean this motor the blocks rated for 900 the piston and rods can hold a thousand but um yeah we're not interested in doing anything crazy like that today so we're just gonna get this thing uh, uh tuned and probably you know we'll just see how things go see where the boost wants to live at and uh yeah, have a good running car at the end of the day. So I'm pretty fired up. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's see what Neil thinks. We're here guys, getting her all loaded up on the dyno. And here's his R33 that I kind of want to buy. We'll get to that later. All right, here we are. Neil, pencil tuning. Yeah. Dude, new shot, man. Thank you, thank you. It's great. I know you just got set up, like what? Moved in a month ago or something like that? Yeah, so all-wheel drive dyno, Tampa Bay area. If you guys need any rentals, let me know. Bring your tuner, bring whatever. He's the man. So we've known each other a while. And uh, yeah, you were telling me you want to take a stab at tuning this thing, and here we are. So what's the game plan today? All right, so we're just gonna start by making sure all inputs and outputs are working. We'll set up the base tune, no, not worried about boost or anything like yep. that just yet. After we get the run-in tune good and everything is functional, we're going to um, move forward into making power. So if everything checks out and everything is flawless, we move into making power. Uh, so on ethanol, I know your desire is like for a five, five, six. Yeah, seven. the way I look at it, I mean, 500 horsepower is really all you can use on the street. So there's no point in pushing the motor, pushing everything. I mean, we have a fully built CSS motor here, O-ringed head, mainly rods, uh, Tron pistons, 10 to one uh, pistons. Like I said, we're running E85 and they assembled the whole bottom end. Uh, Supertech valve train. So we got Supertech up top and yeah, G35 900 turbo. So 62 millimeter turbo. That's new since the last setup, so. Yes. Yeah, we had a S372 on it, which was just stupid to do that. So, but yeah, right. see what you can do with it, man. I'm excited. All right, I'm excited. I'll show you where all the ECUs and all that stuff. All right, guys, here we are. Neil's just verifying the timing with the uh, timing light. Make sure it's all all in order there. So we actually just had to switch over the software from the Haltech ESP to the Nexus software. So that took a lot of time. It actually wound up erasing the map that was on it. So Neil kind of had to start from scratch a little bit, but that's the name of the game in his world. So it's all good. VCT advances will freaking start pulling in a lot more air, which will mix with the fuel and be less. Yeah, yeah. Okay. makes so sense to me. Still went a little bit rich, uh, lean up top, so I got off. That's why I didn't go to the limiter. Yep. Oh, yeah. Nice. I do think 
assuming that maybe you have something going on with your fueling because the numbers in the table are way too big for it to okay i'm gonna keep watching it but the numbers in the table fuel map are way too big for it to be this lead, lead okay up top. All right, check, check this out. Let's talk about what was going on. Well, I suspect that the breakup was for, this breakup right here. Yeah, is from Spark. But the gaps were wide. Yeah, so there were thirty thousand gaps. You went to what? Uh, twenty. Twenty, perfect. For the whole ten thousand. Yep. And well, I have my blankets on it now. It's sound deadening, but that's exactly why I made that little cover because. <laughs> Here's something interesting though. What all right, so this red. This red graph is the pull without with VCT. We didn't go all the way. Yeah. But look how much more it picks up. So we have we picked up almost 116 versus 224, over 100 horsepower. That's crazy. Just using VCT, it is crazy how well <laughs> that works. Honda engineers knew what they were doing. Uh, yeah. Just so. by dialing that cam in a little bit. Yep. Yep. Um, you pinned it at 40 degrees approximately yeah all right so i don't want to go too crazy with the advance right now just in case it over advances but uh yeah we have it off right now and this pull is off that's why it falls off and does this crazy stuff but we're gonna adjust that out uh let's get rid of this cool. yeah so we're just trying to get this smoothed out last time you know what that's the same exact thing that was happening the last time this was on the dyno with the different setup mm -hmm. it was still it was doing that got you so we'll see if narrowing that you just think it was blowing the spark out I think because so. the fuel was on point yeah. yeah well the fuel it wasn't on point but it wasn't in a way where it would, it would do anything like that anything yeah like this. it was rich but not this rich gotcha but all right let's go cool so i just changed the plugs or i just pulled the plugs out neil gapped them and now we're back in action so we'll see what it does now and if we can fix that uh break up up top turbo on this so it's, it's got to start from scratch yeah, all right so with that new turbo setup we just had to add a ton of fuel on this thing um you just also played around with staging the uh, pumps and everything like that so it's really kind of start from scratch here but we're looking good Just using this 
sniffer here to uh, to verify the AFRs from my sensor versus his sensor on the dyno. how tuning goes guys so we just uh now now we're got the car cool down he's still got to add more fuel so right where that vtex kicking in it's just gobbling up a ton of air and uh we just got to match that with fuel so it's just the name of the game but everything's looking good the graph is starting to smooth right out regapping those plugs certainly helped huh man it was 100%. blowing that spark out like crazy 100 percent. yeah too white. i wish i would have known that ahead of time but it didn't take too long <laughs> there we go. I did. they lean out a little still? Yeah, it did, but you see the fuel coming back now? Yeah. So we're getting our fuel back on where I want it to be. I'm going to do the rest of the tune in the comfort of AC office. Yeah. Is my plan. So. Yeah, let's chill, dude. Let the car chill. again yeah. yeah so one issue that we did notice in the graph with, or uh with the data log is that the uh charging um from the alternator was like 13.8 and around 6,000 rpm it dropped down to like 11.8 so there's a big voltage drop about high up in the rpm about 6,000 rpm so maybe the alternator is going bad it's a used alternator from i don't know what so that's likely uh the situation there but We'll see, uh, we'll see what happens with that, but we're gonna uh, plug in the boost solar right now and turn it up a little bit. A little duty cycle. So I just added duty cycle to the back valve. It doesn't seem to be responding, but I just added five more percent, so let's see. Can you uh, move VTEC? I moved VTEC higher to 5500. Yeah. Uh, and I charged the coils a little bit more. Cool. Let's see if that will help. Get rid of that shakiness on the top. Yeah.
351 torque. 14 pounds. The turbo 14 pounds? That's beautiful, man. Uh, well, it went it spiked to 15. There you go. Okay, spiked to almost 16. The Virginia bars. Running rich? Uh, yeah, I started rich just in case it spiked. So what I'm going to do seems is... Seems like it. Well, I'll let you look at it. It yeah. still seems a little shaky on the... Alright, let, yeah, let me check that out. VTEC back lower. I should do a pull without VTEC. I'm going to pull with VTEC and see where they intersect. Yep. And then that's where you set your VTEC point. Right where it starts dropping off. Well, or right you before it, it. You set it low. Yep. And then you set one with no VTEC. And wherever they cross, that's your VTEC point. Oh. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, so right now this is too, I believe this is too high. It steps up too much. You can hear, I mean. You can hear what you're it, it goes. Ah, ah. I mean, it's like, it sounds like a whole different motor. Uh, yeah, so we can straighten this out and dial in some more fuel. I let off early, as you see, just because it was still rich. Yeah. I'm just getting data. So we just did one pull, no VTEC. Yeah. Then we, our last pull was with VTEC. To find our crossover points. Yep. And it seems to like 3,500. I never expected it to like. Which is super low, right? Because you had a what, 5,500? 5,500 before. Which is kind of pretty okay. normal for the yeah. K series you it messed came with. It at 4,500. Um, I was using it at 45 and it was doing that big step. Yeah. made me. Dude, it was doing that huge step with our big turbo. Yeah. It was pff, same yeah. exact, the graph looked the same right there, but this yeah i didn't want it to like i expect something but i don't want to project what i want the car to do so i just let the car do what it wants to do let the car do what it wants to do and this graph looks more like a graph uh, it's still choppy um i charge recoils more and it's still doing yeah this. i think we're gonna need an alternator right yeah the alternator is losing charge so well it's probably the easiest thing you could possibly do in this car so yeah um but outside of that 361 torque, 381 horsepower. This is still falling off boost, but I'm gonna add it back. Uh, this was just a test of VTEC. Dude, 380 horsepower, 361 torque out of a Honda engine is insane. That's so much torque. Yeah. yeah. I still can't believe it. <laughs> I still can't believe these little bastards are do that can do this. Torque is crazy. Torque is crazy, and I'm ripping it to 8,000. You can look at your RPM reference line. It's yep. dead on. Uh, it's crossing at 52, 52. Um, to 200 is where the torque and horsepower crosses so it's calibrated correctly so it's not false numbers as like like it's not it's just it's just you've never seen one want even, uh, want vtech that low huh VTEC that low, no? and it wants what it wants but then again you did change uh you did deck the head and the block yes and change pistons rods all that yes yeah and the, v, the cam gear is also different yes yeah so i guess this is what the combination wants all right and I built my own intake. Yeah. The yeah, seat, yeah, yeah. That probably doesn't mean much, but it's fly, no, 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 fly no, by no. the seat of your pants. I just built, it started building stuff. The, it does affect the personality of the engine, like the profile. The yeah. Cams, the intake does what it wants. What the it personality. Wants. The I like that. I like, the only thing I don't like about it is that it makes the horsepower fall off this curve right here. Yeah. It would normally carry. If you could put a stock intake in there, it would probably carry a little bit longer. I have a Skunk 2 center feed. Mm hmm sitting at my house. Mm. So I wasn't, cause it's a ordeal obviously to do it on this car, but I think I'm gonna put it on the other motor. Got you. Got but we'll see, like I said, we'll who knows. See. If you're happy with it as it drives, we don't care about the numbers. Bro, as as I just, drives, great. I want a nice little Honda Porsche to drive around, you know? Yeah, Honda Porsche. Porsche Honda. <laughs> So that was what, 18 PSI? 18 PSI. Made almost, well, 470, let's say, 442 torque, which are beautiful. Mm -hmm. you know? So what we were running into, our power was climbing and then just falls off a little bit. 
Yeah. You think, I mean, I built my own intake manifold. That's so that's probably the speed off the graph yeah. is your intake manifold. It sets a personality of the engine. And then the choppiness, that's alternate. Your alternator is falling off hard. Yeah. You're losing voltage as you rev. Yep. And this is the choppiness we're talking about. Yeah. So at 6,000 in your logs, it just falls to 11 volts. It falls down to 10. Yep. And your injectors are not happy there. But yes, we can remove it. And you were saying, though, like, if we try fighting that as is, you're just adding injector duty and this and that, and you're just trying to go around a problem that isn't gonna go away. It's not gonna go yeah. away. Because at different boost levels, it still falls off. It just is consistent it's, with RPMs. Right. So every pull, it does this exact same thing. It loses charge, it falls down as you go higher okay. in RPM. Well, alternator is probably the easiest thing you could probably do in this car, so, yeah, I so. mean, that's an easy. There you go, that's your graph. Damn, dude. That is what it is for now. It should have made more, but until we address this, at the same yeah. boost level, it will make 500. No, this is... We'll make 500 with that torque. Well, and thank God it came in, too, because, right, we had a different turbo on this before, mm -hmm. and I wasn't revving it over, like, 3,500, but it was leaning way out, and it was... That could have been a bad situation if I was yes. hot, trying to Jimmy Hot Rod it, you know what I mean? Yep, yep, yep. yep. Actually, you know what I just remembered? Just as a safety, this is, like, 8 degrees of time, right? <laughs> Oh my God. I didn't, in the ignition map, yep. I pulled the timing out just in case it boosts spiked. Oh. And that's what this is. Holy crap. So what it do you think? We're doing it on the motor. <laughs> get a timing safety in at uh, about 6,000 RPM. So it was pulling timing. We just removed that safety. So now it should make the timing that's appropriate. Now that we have everything else dialed in. So it's just a little bit of timing. Same graph, same shape. So you did nothing, but you took out the timing safety. Yeah. Well, let me just shut this off. Right. Yelling that thing. All right, dude, that was nuts. All right, so just recap what just occurred there right. from the last pull, which so the was- the last pull before we did the- Which was the 469. The 469. Yep. Uh, before we turn the boost up, I pulled timing out just as a safety if it ever overshot. Right. Because the boost control was wonky, whatever. Yep. Uh, so I pulled timing out and I forgot to put it back in. So literally, this is the same exact boost, 18 psi, and I added the timing back. I moved it from 10 degrees up to 12 degrees, up to 13 degrees, and this is what we got. 500 horsepower K series daily driver car. Daily driver car. I love it. So there we go. Beautiful, dude. 450 horse, 450 foot pounds of torque at 5,700. That's nuts. It is crazy. And where's the torque really start to be? Like 4,500. Yeah. So where do we have the VTEC kick in? 35? Yeah. The so, VTEC kicks in at 35. But how smooth is that looking it now? Is crazy so, to me. Yeah. Because before it was, huh, whoop, yep. and it was doing a freaking jump. But yep. Yep. so this is all the alternator issue. Yeah. And the downfall you think is my intake manifold design. It's just your intake manifold design. But runner design our it. intake manifold is also giving us a ton of torque. Mm -hmm. So it's like, what well, do we do? do what we... size your runners were? Two and a half. Two and a half. Yeah. But they're straight. They're not they're tapered, straight. so they're not creating much velocity going in. You know what I mean? I, I just winged it. You know what I mean? I didn't really. Got you. Got you. You know, pull out the old CAD program and. <laughs> <laughs> And go that route, but all right. So I mean, this will be great, and satisfied with it for today. Beautiful. Uh, we can revisit it later on. 
if we need to, but for right now, 18 PSI doing this is perfect. Yeah, I can feel safe. I mean, I'm not trying to rip on it and go to jail because that's not what happened, but. Feel safe getting on the car without any hesitation, without any second thought. So we're at 18 pounds boost. You're gonna put a boost cut, what do you think, 20? I'm gonna put it to, just in case it spikes on a cool day, I'll put it at 24. Oh, okay. 24. Well, this motor can, I mean, if, yeah, if it, it boosts, yeah, it. yeah. And if it makes 24, there's fueling and timing there for it too. So it's fine. Perfect. All right. Beautiful, dude. I love it. I can't wait to feel. I mean, this kind of feel bananas. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Huge shout out to Neil on uh, on tuning this car. Check out Pencil Tuning on Instagram. Um, he can do remote tunes. He can do pretty much any um, standalone unit you have. AEM, uh, Honda, Mega Square, uh, Haltech, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And he does all sorts of motors, K series, SRs, 2Js, RB, you know, LSs. Anything you have, he can he can handle. Uh, check him out. He's very thorough. Very good and uh he really knows what he's doing and man we got this car running really strong right now and i'm super fired up at a super safe level with the power and all that given all the internal work so it's a great great power level for the street which is uh which is what we're looking for now uh moving forward um i just have to get this alternator switched out I actually bought one yesterday so we'll get that swapped out that's super easy uh, we're gonna do an oil change on it um, now that we've you know done some big hits with it just to make sure the oil looks all good which i'm sure it's fine um, i'm going to add a oil cooler and uh yeah i think i'm going to leave the stock intake on it you know i know it's creating that horsepower dip but man this thing's making so much torque and honestly the way i drive and being a street car the torque's way more fun you know at that uh rpm range um than than anything so i think it's a really good uh really good you know setup for 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 this car um so i will be bringing the car back to neil i uh gotta get all these things addressed the alternator and i want to get that air conditioning run through the hall tech right now the ac is just on an on off switch so we're gonna wire that into the hall tech and that way the hall tech can control the ac compressor when it turns on and off things like that so we're gonna do those two things, and uh, yeah, I'm looking to bring it to the track once we uh, once we get everything buttoned up here and see what it does in the quarter mile. I mean, it feels faster than my cart did, so I'm thinking, I'm thinking it's probably a 10 second car, uh, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes, and uh, the goal is not to break anything because, uh, yeah, Porsches are expensive. But yeah, guys, I really appreciate y'all watching, and stay tuned for the next one. We're gonna keep hot rodding here. <laughs>